In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Blender to make this animation of bubbles interacting and merging with each other. I'll start by showing you how to make the spheres move like you see here. Then I'll show you how to make the spheres merge with each other. Then lastly, I'll show you how to set up a material that will give it a bubble look. In this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.82. The bubbles are going to be particles that start on the inside of this cube. To set this up, select the cube, switch to the Particles tab, and click the plus button. There will be 10 bubbles, so set the number of particles to 10. Set both the frame start and end values to 1 so that all the bubbles will be present on the first frame. To make sure that the bubbles stay visible throughout the entire animation, I'll set the lifetime value to 1000. In the Source section, select Emit from Volume so that the bubbles will be distributed inside the cube. We don't want the cube itself to be visible, so in the Render area, remove the check mark from next to Show Emitter. Then in the Viewport area, remove the check mark from next to Show Emitter. To give the bubbles movement, I'm going to use the Boyd's Physics type, which is used to simulate the movement of a group of living things, like a flock of birds or a school of fish. This will give our bubbles interesting movement even though our bubbles aren't living things. So in the Physics section, change the Physics type to Boyd's. To prevent the bubbles from moving too quickly, open the Movement section and set the Max Air Speed to 1. In the Boyd Brain section, we can set up rules to control the behavior of the movements. We're going to remove the flock rule and replace it with a goal rule. This will allow us to specify an object that the bubbles will move around. For the object, we'll use an empty object, so press Shift-A and select Empty and then Plane Axis. Now select the cube and set the goal object to the empty that we just added. If I play the animation, the particles will move to and stay near the empty object so that they won't have as far to move when I first start the animation I'm going to scale down the size of the cube by pressing S then point to then enter this is what it looks like now when I play the animation now we're going to set this up to use meta balls for the particles this will allow the particles to interact and merge with each other when they touch. So in the Render section, for the Render As value, select Object. Now add a Meta Ball by pressing Shift A and select Meta Ball and then Ball. Then set its resolution by switching to the Object Data tab and set the Resolution Viewport value to 0.02 .02, and then set the Render value to 0.01. I selected these values earlier by experimentation. The smaller the values, the better it will look, but the longer it will take to calculate the image. We don't want the meta ball to be directly visible in the scene, and so I'll move it way down on the z-axis by pressing G, then Z, then minus 10, then Enter. Now select the cube and switch to the Particles tab. Set the Instance object to the meta ball that we just added. Then set the scale to 0.1. Also, set the scale randomness value to 0.5 to produce some variation in the size of the bubbles. I'll play the animation again. You can see that the meta balls merge together when they get close and overlap. Now let's add a floor to use as a background. So press Shift A and select Mesh and then Plane. Then scale it up in size by pressing S, then 100, then Enter. Now move it down on the Z-axis by pressing G, then Z, then minus 3, then Enter. Next we'll set its material. So switch to the Material tab and add a new material. Keep the default principled shader and set the base color to black. Then set the roughness to 1. The bubbles will look better if we give them something to reflect, so I'm going to add this image to the background. It's not an HDR image, it's just an ordinary photograph, but it will work well for producing reflections. You can find a link to it in the video description. So switch to the World tab. Click the small button next to the color and select Environment Texture. Then click the Open button, navigate to whatever photograph you're going to use, and select it. 
I'm going to brighten it up by setting the strength to 3.5. This image is going to produce all of the lighting for the scene, so you may want to adjust the strength later on when all of the materials are set up. We don't need the light source, so select it and press X to delete. Now let's set up the material for the bubbles, so select the Meta Ball. Then switch to the Material tab and add a new material. Now switch to the Shading Workspace. I'll press Z and select Rendered so that you can see what the rendered image looks like as I make changes. Now switch to the Render tab and set the Render Engine to Cycles. Next we're going to add some color to the bubbles. So press Shift A and select Texture and then Magic Texture. Connect it to the base color input. Then set the depth to 6, the scale to 10, and the distortion to 2. I arrived at these values through experimentation. Now we'll make the bubbles smooth and reflective. So change the principled shader metallic value to 1 and the roughness value to 0. Next we're going to mix in a transparent shader. So press Shift A and add a mix shader to the output of the principled shader. Then press Shift A and add a transparent shader. Connect it to the top mix shader input which will also move the principled shader to the bottom input. We're going to use a Fresnel node to control the mix shader. So press Shift A and select input and then Fresnel. Connect it to the factor input. Change the IOR value to 1.15. You'll notice that the bubbles are not transparent around the edges. So we're going to add one more node. So press Shift A and select Converter and then Math. Drop it on the output of the Fresnel node. Set the type to Minimum. Leave the value set to 0.5. This will prevent factor values larger than 0.5 from being used, which will ensure that all parts of the bubble are at least partially transparent. Now I'll switch back to the layout workspace. The animation is going to be 220 frames long, and so I'll set the end frame to 220. By the way, for the renders, I'm using the Cycles Render Engine with 64 render samples. If you don't know how to render an animation, you can watch my video on that topic. I'll put a link to it in the video description. This is what the rendered animation looks like. We have some nice interaction between the bubbles as they merge with each other. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment.